Okay, the last question. Nate Grundman, can you imagine, referring to you, Michael, can you imagine a mental practice by which a person can influence the goal state of the body? For example, Joe Dispenza has made some claims that he's healed his body in a way that doctors say are impossible. And also, a question I had for you earlier, which relates to this, is how your work is related to the placebo effect. So, whether or not you see the connection there, I'm, I'm interested in the placebo effect, too. I'm trying to sneak in two questions sure. for the price sure. one. Yeah. Um, okay, so so I, I don't know anything about uh, Joe Dispenza. I don't know anything about the claims that he's made or, or any specific, uh, you know, kind of uh, healing event. But I'll give you kind of a general thought about this. It is uncontroversial that your your thoughts, whatever they may be, whether or not uh, you know whatever whatever you think thinking is, it is pretty uncontroversial that your thoughts affect the physiological functioning of your body. I mean, that's obvious. If you if you want to get up and walk around, your thoughts have now activated various uh, electrical pathways they've triggered a bunch of muscle motion if you have a tendency to you know mentally work yourself up into an anxious state you can certainly by 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 your thinking uh crank up various stress enzyme production in your body right we all know that you can do the opposite if you if you've trained in techniques to calm yourself down under various circumstances you can uh reduce the level of cortisol in your blood you can reduce um various uh various fight and flight responses so it's 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 not some 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 weird um you know of a voodoo a kind of claim to uh, to say that that your thoughts absolutely affect the biophysical processes of your body we do it every day if that wasn't true you couldn't get up in the morning when you wanted to get up and go to work so so it's it's that that part's completely obvious so from there it's a very short uh hop skip and a jump to the idea that not only can you give commands to your muscles and your glands to produce various hormones neurotransmitters and muscle motion but you might be able to exert some influence over other cells, for example, skin cells um, in your, uh, you know, at, at wounds and and uh, and and your liver, the and the way that it processes information. Uh, I don't find it implausible whatsoever. So I don't. Again, I'm not commenting on any particular instance of anybody having healed themselves of anything. I'm just saying that it is it is uh, it is it is not uh, it is not a stretch to think that. Not only can you talk to your very, when I say talk, I mean, you know, exert, exert influence on your, uh, on your various glands that, that put out cortisol and adrenaline and various other things. Why can't, why can't you send commands to other cells? I, that, that seems, it seems silly to think that that's impossible. So, um, having said all that, I think that, uh, the placebo effect is extremely profound. I think that what it's telling us is that there is a communication across levels. So you have, meaning that you have a level of organization that consists of your body cells, and that has a degree of cognition and a degree of intelligence, but your body is also home to an additional intelligence, which lives probably largely in the brain, and it appears that those two can, uh, can communicate in various ways. And I can imagine that there are, new, there, are, there are lots of things to be discovered about ways to improve that communication. And have you know we we know we know there are certain practices where people extend the amount of time they can they can um, sit underwater and and uh, change their body temperature and and uh, change their their pulse rate and things like that. I find it completely plausible that that there are ways to uh, communicate in that way to other cells in the body. Also, uh, there is the there is the field of um, yeah, hypnodermatology. Where where people by hypnosis try to treat various skin diseases, some of which have a neuro neuroimmune component, some of which may not have a neuroimmune component. So um, the activity of of the mind, which is simply the execution of of the physiological um, computations that happen in the brain, affect physiological computations that happen outside the brain. I don't think that's I don't think that's particularly a stretch uh, at all. Um, One of your goals is an anatomical compiler. And then what you just said made me think, well, some of these people who are meditating or on the more meditative side tend to work with thoughts to heal oneself. And then I was wondering, hmm, I wonder if your anatomical compiler can advise some of the more thought-based healing practices. Here's an example. You say, well, if you were to think of this image, it's more likely to heal you than if you were to think of this other image. Do you think that's at all possible or that's way too high level? 
I don't think it's I don't think it's impossible. No. Uh, again, I'm not suggesting that there's I'm not supporting any particular image of uh, as being a healing one, but I don't think it's it's impossible at all. I mean, the uh, and and the, and there's been work recently on various types of um, uh, pulsed light stimuli into the retina, having some some interesting neuro uh, re, neuroprotective effects in the brain and so on. Um, yeah, all of this it's it's a giant electrical network. All of the cells are communicating with each other. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why that couldn't work. But I think that um, you know, to to be clear, this anatomical compiler isn't just us. You know, the anatomical compiler is a it's a sort of practical. Um, personification of the goal that all of us in the community are going for, which is the ability to control growth and form, right? And and when we have that ability, that's when the anatomical compiler becomes positive, possible. So it's not just something that we, you know, we in particular are working on. But I think that uh, this is this is part of all, all the things you're discussing now are part of the deep reason why cognitive science and consciousness and all of those kinds of things are deeply related to developmental biology and physiology. Right, they're they're absolutely interrelated because they are two sides of the same coin. Information processing in goal-directed hierarchical systems, and when you understand, the more you understand about one, the better you are at managing the others. This is this is two sides of the same question.